ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम वेलकम टू मोक कोर्स ऑन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इंट्रैक्टोमिक्स यूजिंग जीनोमिक्स एंड प्रोटीमिक्स टेक्नोलॉजीज बिफोर वी स्टार्ट दिस कोर्स लेट मी गिव यू द जेनेसिस ऑफ वाई वी आर गोइंग टू ऑफर दिस कोर्स दिस कोर्स इज मेनली टू अपडेट यू अबाउट वेरियस एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एडवांस्ड हाई थ्रोपो टेक्नोलॉजीज लाइक माइक्रोअरेज नेक्स्ट जनरेशन सिक्वेंसिंग मास स्पेक्टोमीट्री लेबल फ्री प्लेटफॉर्म्स If you understand these technologies, their principles, and possible applications, then it can actually help you to address many biological questions, irrespective of which field, which discipline of life sciences you work with. You can definitely get highly benefited. Let me also mention, even if you are not a biology student, you are a student from computational background or bioinformatics background, even you will get highly benefited. for uh, attending this course because you will get to know how the big data is being generated and what are different pipelines which could be utilized for its data analysis so again this course is definitely going to broaden your scope about current latest technologies available which could be utilized for various type of biological applications especially in tractomics applications in the areas of genomics and proteomics at iit bombay we conducted a workshop in 2018 and this course is actually a modified version of this workshop where we invited many eminent scientists and application scientists especially one of the distinguished foreign faculty dr joshua leber he visited us and participated in this course uh, and workshop and many other academia and industry leaders and speakers we are also involved in giving lectures and providing hands on sessions during this course we realized that it was a major effort to really educate community about the latest advancements in this area directly from the experts so by attending this course you will get highly benefited by listening the lectures directly from the experts and also getting a feel of how to do the experiments in this area and this course we are going to cover in the next 8 weeks where various lectures hands on sessions and assignments will be given to you periodically before each lecture or even before we have any expert or the invited speaker i will provide a brief overview of what the lecture contents are about and also give you my summary of at the end of lecture what was concluded from that lecture so this will also help you to bring the perspective and try to understand the whole lecture and course in a systematic manner apart from the intensive lecture series and the demonstrations of experiments this course will also include weekly assignments and interactive sessions we'll also have the live sessions directly from my proteomics laboratory at iit bombay where i will be involved directly in showing you some experiments along with my teaching assistants and we will take your query live and try to address your comments you know any concerns you have or any curiosity you have this will definitely you know open up and broaden your understanding and scope of how to do this experiment directly in the lab this sessions when i have offered some other mooc courses have been you know very stimulating very lively and lot of you know participants like this kind of personal interactions i am sure in this course also we will continue this effort and you will get highly benefited by directly interacting with us so now let's talk about uh, today's class so you are going to see the recordings which we had uh, taken for my lecture uh, during the workshop the very first lecture where i provided an overview of microarray based technologies so imagine that you want to uh, understand a biological system complex system and you have very small amount of clinical sample available for testing or very small amount of protein or drug available to do the testing for the thousands of protein 
So, microarray technology where you have thousands of proteins printed on the chip can be a very powerful platform for high throughput applications and screening. So, in this lecture I am going to talk to you about the applications of protein microarray based technology, its genesis, its advancement and its various applications in the areas of life sciences and translational biology. I hope you will enjoy this first lecture. Let me start uh, the course detail. Uh, the course uh, will actually revolve around intractomics where Dr. Josh Lebert, uh, he is the expert scientist uh, who works in that area. Uh, and uh, you know, fortunately I was actually, uh, I did my postdoc when I was at Harvard Medical School uh, under Dr. Josh Lebert. Uh, then he moved to Arizona uh, Institute, Arizona University where he is currently a director of Biodesign Center. Uh, so, I feel really fortunate that you know I got training from uh, Dr. Josh Lebert and uh, today he is coming here to India to uh, conduct this kind of course, 5 days long course which is quite a significant time contribution for somebody of his you know uh, busy schedule. When I was doing my postdoc we were offering some course uh, in this area of interactomics and proteomics uh, at Cold Spring Harbor and we went almost 3 times and those courses were almost 14 days long. So, uh, you know just imagine that you know 14 days you are uh, kind of conducting a course, 2 weeks long course and, uh, and, and courses are you know very intense you know like full day course uh, and the, the plan is that people come without any prior background, any knowledge and then over the period then kind of they feel uh, they are really confident about taking those things. And many of them are you know like you like many of them are actually independent PIs who want to set up their groups, who want to bring new technologies to their lab. And so that was a very good experience you know both working with Josh as well as many other experts uh, and also how to you know conduct quality courses. And I must say that you know I was always thinking and you know uh, hoping that can we conduct some of these kind of you know quality courses back in India you know when I joined back to uh, reach to India can we do some of these kind of courses uh, where uh, we have real experts who will talk to you directly. You know many times we do courses but you know uh, may not be the person or not the, the best experts in the field. So, uh, this is one of the initiative I, I may not say that this is probably going to live up to the same level of Cold Spring Harbor what uh, we would have done it, but at least this is one effort in that direction to give you some training and experience uh, with the direct uh, experts of the field. So, uh, as you can see that you know uh, in this uh, image uh, we are going to talk about um, several things linked to both microarray based platforms and label free based biosensors. So, Imagine that you know if you want to label your proteins uh, then for detection you need some sort of you know readout especially fluorescence based readouts and those are very powerful and many labs have those kind of scanners and the ability to perform uh, these kind of experiments. So, therefore, microarray based uh, and especially label based approaches have been quite popular. Nevertheless, you know whenever you are modifying a protein whenever you are adding certain tags or you know some sort of you know labels then there is always a chance that protein gets modified and what signal you see may not be true it could be artifacts. And uh, you know the whole process of doing labeling and doing the entire uh, experiment is also very tedious, it takes lot of time. And again when you do microarray experiment you, it will be you know a powerful platform, but what you may realize that whole day you will be pretty much you know working in the blind area and then at the end of the day then probably you will scan a slide and then you realize that ok can I see a signal or I do not see a signal. So, then whole day you have literally no control on your experiment it is like western blot. Whereas, in label free technology uh, you have the ability to modulate the experiment the change the experiment in the live uh, manner. So, in the real time way if you see a binding is not happening then probably you can say ok no the analyte concentration is not correct, my mobilization was not good I should actually change the pH condition probably I should now change the temperature because that interaction will only happen in, in that condition. So, in the label free manner uh, there are approaches uh, including surface plasma resonance, including bioleer interferometry, many other new pr platforms are coming, biosensors are coming which could be used to do the uh, interaction analysis in the label free manner. So, again some of these are newer ways of thinking about how to study biomolecular interactions. Uh, it is not limited to only protein protein, you know protein is small molecules even protein DNA all of those interactions are possible. So, uh, this slide just conveys you that you know how dynamic the proteome is uh, and of course, if you really want to study any physiological system uh, just studying one biomolecule is not sufficient. 
So you really need to know, you know what are genes involved, which are the transcripts involved, what could be metabolites, how the environmental factors affect them. And then of course the, the proteins which are very dynamic molecule with different modifications happening together. Once you study these things, uh, including that what network of proteins and biomolecules which are you know, triggering different cascade of events, the, the activities, those things become very crucial for uh, us to really uh, identify a system, identify a physiological uh, system and then try to get information in a much more systems way. So therefore a system biology field is really growing much where intention is not only to look at one field at a time or one property at a time, but rather look at the dynamic molecules together and see how a system works. And many times, you know, when you try to extrapolate information at the protein level or DNA level, RNA level, you are seeing, you know, a small bit of picture. But when you look at the system's network, probably you are seeing a much bigger, much different picture of the whole uh, system. And that is something which is very much computational biology driven field. Uh, where a lot of you know computer scientists are now getting involved to to come up with the big data and make some sort of notes and some hypothesis based on those which can be tested back in the lab. All right, so uh, let me start with you know a couple of uh, classical ways of studying protein-protein uh, interactions, which ideally you are you know uh, briefly familiar with. So the conventional approaches of using protein-protein uh, interactions were is to hybrids different type of immunoprecipitation methods, affinity chromatography, etc. Uh, more latest approaches and more high throughput technologies have emerged, which includes protein microarrays and different type of label free technologies. So this is kind of a broad picture which you can keep in your mind that all of these techniques in one or the other way are going to give you same information, but uh, you are, you know, there are some classical approaches and by learning from those there are some newer approaches which have tried to overcome those limitations. So immunoprecipitation, uh, you have identified a protein of your interest and now you want to identify which are the possible interactors. So to do that, let's say you are using, uh, you know, this is case when you have an antigen which is known for your uh, interest, this is the antibody which is binding. And now many of the potential interactors are actually binding uh, which are having potential interaction, which you do not know is a direct interaction or indirect interaction, but they are the potential interactors. Now then when you are resolving them on the gel, then on the denaturing condition, then you can separate those well. So here you are trying to provide non-denaturing conditions so that interactions could happen. And then you are trying to allow the denaturing conditions so that you can separate those interactors. And this is where you can then use mass spectrometry technologies to identify the known or potential interactors. Many times you will find out that many proteins are very sticky proteins. They are not the real interactors. And that's where I think then you will feel to need to have more, you know, latest approaches and more kind of, you know, high throughput approaches to look for more direct interactions. The classical approach of using yeast to hybrid uh, has been in field from very long time. It's still being used very heavily uh, where interactions uh, are, you know, being used, especially in the yeast kind of environment. Uh, when you have a bait and you have a prey uh, binding domain and activation domain, when they come together, then the transcription can happen. And this kind of approach is very powerful, uh, but major problem which people have seen, there are a lot of false positives which comes from the screening. So when you identify hundreds of interactors using this hybrid, you're not very sure that you know how many of those are really relevant for you to really take it forward. So this can be a good starting point, but of course not uh, the most powerful way of doing the protein-protein or uh, biomolecular interactions. So therefore, some of the newer approaches have come forward, which includes protein microarray based platforms and that kind of stuff which we want to talk in more detail today. Uh, so like you know other type of oligo arrays uh, which were in field in 1995 or so more at the, that time uh, many type of genome sequencing projects were happening. So looking at the genome sequencing success uh, people were able to get all the oligos printed on the chips and therefore at that time between 1995 to uh, let's say 2005 that was the time when many type of chips were being produced, people started thinking about screening, uh, you know, a lot of genes simultaneously. From that success, which, you know, people got inspired in the protein field and they thought, can we, you know, replicate the same success at the protein level? Of course, you know, you all are aware that protein production itself is very challenging. You don't have, you know, capability to produce proteins as a straightforward way, you know, as you can do using PCR for the oligos, right? So, uh, but nevertheless, people thought to, to use those kind of approaches as well. Uh, and broadly different type of arrays came in the field. 
uh, which are listed here, one approach could be uh, antibody based arrays. If you have you know, antibodies available, good antibodies available, if they are immobilized on the glass slide or nitrocellulose or different type of substrates, then that is term as the antibody there is. Or if you have purified proteins or proteins produced in any, any possible manner, those can be term as the target protein arrays. So this is a broad classification which is started with to the field. Uh, antibody arrays are very robust. As long as you have access to good antibody, then you will have you know, very clean and very neat signal. But I'm sure you are aware of that there are not many good antibodies that are available and you know, purchasing them is very costly. So the overall uh, you know, doing the experiments using antibody arrays are very limited. So then many times you are only looking at hand-picked proteins or antibodies which are available for it and you want to only limit your screen to that. You cannot afford to do high throughput screening for all kind of proteins of interest, right? So nevertheless, all of this intention was to print the contents, print the proteins or antibodies on the chip which are on the glass slides in a very high density approach so that even with a very small uh, amount of contents, a small amount of your clinical sample or any kind of a, a molecule which you want to screen, you can still do the screening on thousands of molecules simultaneously. So that was the uh, genesis of this whole field. Uh, the very first approach of taking this particular type of uh, protein array uh, field forward was done by uh, Gavin Macbeth at Harvard. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, that time 2000 or so, uh, that time lot of, you know, uh, people were publishing the work based on oligo arrays, different type of chips were available that time. Uh, and he made the first attempt that can we print the proteins on the chip and can we use that for a screening? And that was the first time he made an effort to extrapolate understanding from the genes to the protein level. And uh, as a result, so this was a very you know, smart experiment where only two proteins were used. Uh, one of the proteins is shown in the red is different protein and rest everything is one same protein. And he just showed that, you know, if I'm incubating with the, you know, a specific antibody, I can see that particular type of signal uh, which can distinguish from other protein. So, Despite you know the fact that he did not have access to large number of purified protein, but still you know conceptually he showed that proteins could be printed on the chip, and you can achieve a specific signal out of these kind of small arrays. So that that's why he got publication in Science at that time, and that just kind of started the field. Many people who had access that time of clones, many clones who had in their lab with expression vectors, they started purifying the proteins or those who had already access to the pure proteins. Uh, you know, they started, you know, printing on the chips and immediately from 2000 to 2005, many good papers in Nature and Science came, uh, especially uh, from Mike Schneider's lab uh, when they had access to many of the yeast proteins and then they immediately printed 5600 yeast proteins on the chip and then they did some sort of, you know, uh, interaction studies on those. So, you know, this uh, concept just brought forward uh, many scientists and many approaches that now we can do uh, high throughput screening from the for the protein and do many assays on the chip itself. So uh, I'm showing you now, you know, several approaches which can be used for different type of microarrays. Uh, let's start with here with the direct label based methods. Now here the antibodies are printed. So initially I'm showing you a couple of antibody based approaches, uh, which can be termed as abundance based uh, protein arrays. Now if antibodies are printed and now you have the target proteins which are labeled with different type of fluorescent molecules that can be used as one of the array which is known as the direct labeling based uh, method or you can have uh, you know antibodies and let's say you have uh, the secondary antibody uh, which is going to uh, be labeled with the uh, capture molecule and that is known as a sandwich amino assay like the way you do for you know ELISA or western blots. Uh, so this can be much more powerful much more specific signal can be seen. But then you can also have the, the tissue or your cell lysates printed on the chip and then you can have the specific antibodies which you want to probe and that is the reverse fail arrays which will be talked in much more detail today. Or you, if, if you have access to the purified proteins in the lab that is the best thing which you can then try to immobilize those on the chip surface directly and that is the you know using chemical linkage that is the purified protein based arrays. Uh, many times you may not be interested in looking at the entire proteins. Uh, you just want to uh, see that you know certain domains can you you know get the peptides for those and then you want to print the peptide itself on the chip and, and those can be uh, studied using peptide arrays. So uh, many times you know when you have the clones which are having uh, let's say uh, histidine tag and if you have the nickel NTA type of coating 
So this concept can be used here for uh, this array-based platform, which is shown here for the peptide fusion-based arrays. Uh, then we can also think about generating the protein contents, uh, which could be used for the uh, making the protein directly from the DNA itself. And that is another approach which you can uh, which you can think about making the protein directly on the chip from the DNA, and that is known as in vitro transcription translation-based method and different type of self free expression based methods uh, can be used for that. All right, so this part is something which Dr. Josh Reber is going to cover in much more detail. Uh, so his lab was first time uh, they showed that uh, you can take cDNA and then from those cDNA, if you can do the transcription and translation on the chip itself, then you can make the protein directly on the chip. And that was you know very revolutionary concept uh, because now everybody has access to a lot of you know the cDNA clones and if from those cDNA directly, if you can synthesize sufficient amount of protein on the chip, then probably that can be very powerful for doing a lot of protein based assays. And uh, the concept of in vitro transcription translation was not novel, like it is not done by Josh Lab. It is already in the field from long time, but thinking about how to use that on the protein arrays was the first novel concept. And they came up with the approach which is nucleic acid programmable protein arrays. In this case, each of the cDNA has a GST tag, and on the same chip, then if you have immobilized anti-GST molecule, so if you are adding in vitro transcription translation machinery, uh, all the amino acids and you know the polymerase, etc., so that your uh, you know the proteins can be synthesized directly. So if any protein synthesized from this particular clone, then if that goes and binds to the anti-GST antibody, then probably you have you know a way to detect that particular protein. Uh, of course, the protein production is very uh, you know little; it's not too much amount present. But that much amount is sufficient for detection for different type of microarray based assays. So this talk, you know, this part will be covered, of course, in much more detail uh, eventually. I'm just giving you the the feel of doing different type of approaches. Uh, looking at the previous experiment from Napa with uh, you know Josh Pepper, then another group came forward with uh, multiple spotting technology or MIST technology, where intention was can we even take some of the uh, you know uh, PCR based products. Uh, which are unpurified and directly use those products to print on the chip and then we can still do in vitro transcription translation. So again, in, intent is that without purifying the protein, which is a difficult thing in the field, can we you know, uh, generate still the protein content and do the assays in very high throughput and robust manner. But each of the method which I have been talking has its own pros and cons, which as we go along, we'll keep talking. Uh, one other, another approach of using self-free expression based arrays was DAPA or DNA arrays to protein arrays. Uh, in, in which case, let's say you have a template slide here where you have the DNA printed. And now you have a membrane, permeable membrane, in which you have added now the uh, in vitro transcription translation mix. Proteins are synthesized from there and they are getting passed. Uh, assume that you have you know, histidine tag in these. And on other chip, if you have coated nickel and TA, then they are going to bind to the, uh, this chip, which is for the protein arrays. So this is much more pure protein arrays because you have actually removed uh, the DNA part of it. Only purified protein is actually leaching out, and they are getting printed on the chip. So it was again a good concept. Of course, it has its own problem of you know diffusion and all that, which did not make it so popular. Uh, one more approach came, which is halotag based arrays. So looking at the academic success, even commercial companies came forward, and uh, Promega thought to use. Uh, their existing IVT mix, which they had, in vitro transcription transition mix, which they had, and HelloTag technology, which they already been using for structural work. Uh, how we can use those two together for doing the uh, protein arrays work? Uh, HelloTag actually shows very covalent, you know, very strong binding with the ligands uh, on the chip. And if that is the case, then probably when you are using it for protein micro or experiment, then at that time you are doing a lot of washing steps, so your proteins will not be washed off. So this one was actually, you know, very strong uh, signal you can see with halo tag arrays. And they're also providing this particular thing in a small chip format uh, where you can do your own in-house type of printing. So small, uh, you know, you will get a glass slide and a gasket will be given to you. In the gasket, there'll be some space. Now you can put your, you know, uh, DNA material, which is having halo tag contents. So then now you are actually printing automatically without having a micro array printer. And then when you add this particular, you know, the, the, uh, the mix, where your proteins are being synthesized, then you can detect that using halotag antibodies. 
So these are something which is very powerful approach. Uh, some of this we are also going to show you and demonstrate to you as we go along in the course. So broadly, you know, uh, as I said, I may not have time enough right now to uh, talk to you about each technology in much more detail, but I have given you an overview, broad overview, to appreciate that there are many type of approaches are already in place. Uh, started from various type of antibody based approach, uh, looking both direct and indirect ways of uh, using an antibodies for array based approaches, purified protein, peptides, and even using your cDNA molecules to directly produce the proteins on the chip itself. So there are a whole lot of things happening in this area. And within the self-free expression based approach itself, there are many technology which are in place. For example, we have nucleic acid, programmable protein array or NAPA. We have multiple spotting technique, DNA arrays to protein arrays, halotag arrays, and one of the very older method was protein in situ arrays or PISA. So some of these are just kind of, you know, a, a glimpse to you to convey that it is not a field which is, you know, very limited or which is very, uh, you know, have very small end of end users. It's actually, you know, a grown field but of course has some limitation of the contents and the, you know, how much density can you produce, those things, the, the access to the chips, some of these are limitations, but there are many ways. Uh, and when you go to Europe, actually you will find lot of labs are using different type of peptide arrays and different type of, you know, array based, based approaches. Many companies are actually producing those, those kind of contents now. So this is one of the growing field. And of course, if your intention is to really something, you know, functional information for your unknown proteins and uncharacterized proteins, this can be one of the very powerful platforms. In addition to just, you know, uh, many times your context is you know a protein and you want to understand more about it. But, you know, a lot of time you have a protein which is totally unknown protein, right? And after doing your entire, you know, big screening discovery work, you identified a protein for which now you want to know what is the function of it. So today we try to convey you the basic concepts of protein microarrays. I am sure you are aware of the basics of DNA based microarrays, which are still much simpler technology, much robust technology. But when we talk about protein microarrays, the content generation itself is very challenging. And then you are talking about various assays where you want to address many biologically relevant questions. So having, you know, uh, certain biological questions like a screening of autoantibody could be very powerful platform using microarrays. And for different cancer and different autoimmune disorders, it has been shown that using protein microarray based technology and platform, one could identify the targets which could help us to detect disease early. And just imagine that if you are going to a clinic and from the routine blood based test, these kind of testing could be done using autoantibodies where a doctors can predict that this person might be uh, suffering from this disease early stage, I think that could be very valuable information and protein microarrays could definitely give at least some clues in this light. So I hope you got a glimpse of some of these advanced high throughput technologies which I discussed in today's lecture. This will also be covered again in more detail in the following lectures where other invited speakers are also going to give you a glimpse of different type of microarray based platforms, different technologies and different applications. See you next lecture.